I think if nothing else, this coaching staff has started to um, really identify and perhaps settle in on who their game changers are. Yeah. And, you know, I think for a, a while there, we are sort of seeing what the ideal 11 could be for this coaching staff. So we even said like going into that first game, we were like, we would love to see, you know, player A, B or C get time or get a start. But we think we're going to see the, 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 the tired old and true usual suspects of Haran and Lavelle and, and, and Sullivan. And we got a little bit of a combo breaker there with the introduction of, of Korniak in, in this. So I thought if nothing else, it was cool to see that there's still some room for um, mix up here. Um, but I think over the course of the last, the previous six months, we've seen in that sort of ideal starting 11 in terms of the players that are available. Because again, there's players making their return from maternity leave. There's players that are making their return from injury. So there's a possibility that we're going to see that starting, that ideal starting 11 shift a little bit. So if nothing else, I think this coaching staff is starting to see who those game changers off the bench could, you know, be for actual locks for that World Cup roster. And I think you're you're looking at players like Sanchez, you're looking at player like Trinity Rodman, you know, the you have to start thinking about like what are who are the players that I don't want to leave at home versus who are the players that you want to take. It's like, no, it's like who are the players yeah. that you do not want to leave at home? Um, yeah. So I I'm, I liked these two friendlies. I think uh, they were important in terms of, um, you know, those those younger players who perhaps are still um, being asked to, to leave their mark and being asked to, to, to leave an impact on the coaching staff. Um, important for them to to get that experience in New Zealand in the event that they are named to that, that final world cup roster. Um, and it really makes me excited for she believes cup. I think that's yes. where I'm at right now. These two games make me really, yeah. really excited for she believes. Cause so another thing that I really liked about this January camp is not only did they announce it and they said, there's going to be a six day camp. It's going to be in New Zealand. Players are going to be able to, to get a chance to, to play in, in Auckland and in Wellington, right? Sort of mirror that group yeah. stage for their group E draw. That part made me excited. But well, now that we've had these two games completed, it makes me really excited for She Believes Cups because not only did they announce that, they were really quick in announcing that they had the She Believes Cup locked up and they're going to face Brazil, Canada, and Japan. And I think that's the opportunity where you and I are going to get to talk a little bit more about some defensive-looking things. Huge. I agree. I think with She Believes Cup around the corner, it kicks off February 16th with the U.S. against Canada. That is going to be a true, true test. And Black Mananowski has to be thinking about the competition between Canada, Japan, and Brazil just a month away, under a month away for this team and these players. And as he has narrowed down his roster from 40-some to 30-some and understanding that at this point you can only bring 23 players to the World Cup, I'm, I will not be surprised if that's how many we see going to She Believes Cup. If it's a smaller roster, maybe 24 again. We saw 24 yeah. on this January camp mm -hmm. roster as one extra to see kind of uh, what shakes out in training. But you're right. He has to be looking at this as who can I not leave home? Who cannot be staying at home um, because I might need them because I, I want their skills and what they bring to the table on this roster. That's something that is going to be really, really important to see. Um, and I think uh, the competition is going to be very different against a Canada or Brazil, a, a Japan versus a New Zealand. So maybe that plays a role into personnel. Like, are we going to see Korniak in the six still? I think when we saw her <laughs> twice in January there, we might continue to see her in the six. But how does that you know look what? different? against a Canada. Maybe we'll see Rose play a little bit deeper um, in that oh. midfield that we saw. There are so many exciting things to come with this team and everything that's just around the corner. And She Believes Cup is, it's going to be real juicy. Real juicy. I'm, I'm just like listening to you and I'm like, God, I can't wait till we really get some episodes in on, on She Believes Cup. It's true. God, could you imagine? Yeah, let's start Taylor Cornier against Brazil and see what happens. I can't, I can't even. Sink or swim. Yeah. It, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're I know we're so excited about it. We're already teasing it a, a little bit. But um, look, 2023, it's here. It's official. It's in the books. January camp is a wrapped 
up. That's it for us on January camp at A3. Thank you all so much for listening to Attacking Third. We appreciate you joining us.